All right, so Tennessee lost to Georgia, so we know Tennessee will slip in tonight's college football playoff rankings. But where will Tennessee be placed? The Vols should be fourth. They'll end up being fifth. I'll tell you why right here on a Tuesday. Locked on Vols. You are locked on Vols, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it. This is your Tuesday edition of the show, Locked On Balls. I'm your host, Eric Kane. You can always find me and find the show on Twitter at underscore Kaner and at Locked On Balls. I host the podcast every single day. If you're new to the show, uh, thanks so much for joining us and giving us a try out there. You can catch us on uh, YouTube. Please subscribe and like the video. And of course, anywhere you get your audio podcast completely free. And today's episode is brought to you in part by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season. With more op- more props and odds and lines than ever before, bet online, it is where the game starts. Okay, so making the case for Tennessee to be number four in tonight's college football playoff rankings. Tennessee lost. Tennessee will slide down. We know that. But where will the slide down? Because of all the chaos and craziness that happened on Saturday nights, I think Tennessee should still be at number four, and I'll tell you why. That plus your mailback questions in segments two and three, all that coming up here on today's show. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was not going to wait around until about nine thirty at night to record uh, the show for the next morning to recap Tennessee's win over Tennessee Tech in real time. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but in real time of recording, it just got to halftime. Tennessee couldn't find a three point shot to save its life, but obviously we know Tennessee is going to. Uh, uh, win big over Tennessee Tech. We'll talk plenty of basketball here on this podcast. Don't get me wrong, but you know, football's what uh what you guys care about. Football pays the bills, and there is a lot to talk about in terms of football. So let's uh let's get right down into it. All right. So for Tennessee, making its case to be number four in the college football playoff rankings tonight. Of course, the AP poll came back out. This edition came back out on Sunday. Number one, Georgia, number two, Ohio State, number three, Michigan. Number four, TCU. Number five, Tennessee. Oregon's at six, LSU at seven, USC at eight, UCLA at nine, and Alabama at number 10. Excuse me. Um, So that's the AP. Do I think it's going to look exactly like that? Maybe, probably the top four likely will be looking like that because it's like TCU is undefeated. TCU does have four ranked wins. They're 4-0 on the season. And TCU was ranked number seven, I believe, last week. But Alabama lost and Clemson lost two of the and, and Tennessee lost. So three of those teams, you know, lost in front of them. So it's almost like you got to give TCU its due. Now, TCU's got a massive football game coming up this weekend against Texas. Um, you know, the college football playoff rankings, this is the second edition of them. They go all the way through championship sun or Saturday. So there's going to be more weeks to where they're gonna come back out. It's made for TV, guys. And so for, you know, one of those reasons alone, I think that Tennessee might be ranked fifth with TCU there at number four. But Tennessee should be ranked number four. Why? Well, when comparing just the two schools, Tennessee's eight and one, TCU's nine and no. Tennessee has the number two strength of schedule. TCU has the number 68th strength of schedule. Offensive efficiency. uh, This is from the uh, ESPN Football Power Index. Tennessee's number four. TCU is number 11. Defensive efficiency. TCU is number 37. Tennessee is number 35. Record against ranked opponents, Tennessee's 5 and 1, TCU is 4 and 0. Oh. But again, the big one, T- TCU does have four ranked wins, but that strength of schedule is number 68 where Tennessee's is number 2 and Tennessee's one loss was a 14-point loss to Georgia. And I know you watched that game, it felt like it was a lot more, but at the end of the day, I mean that's that, that that's what's, you know, that's what's on the scoreboard, right? It was 27-13. And every committee member is a little bit different. So, you know, we'll have to see exactly what that looks like. I think Tennessee still deserves to be ranked in the top four. I think Tennessee should be ranked at number four coming up tonight. But I don't think it's going to work that way. Why? Because you want Tennessee fans to be tuning back in next week. And the week after that. And the week after that. TCU's got Baylor coming up. It's got Texas. It's got a Big 12 championship game. So there are a lot of opportunities for TCU to be knocked out. Thus, why not give them their due here in the round two of the college football playoff ranking? So again, if that's the way it works out, it's not the end of the world. Tennessee really just needs to continue winning these last three games against Missouri, against South Carolina, and against Vanderbilt. 
Tennessee should have no issue whatsoever with those teams. You can't just show up. You got to come in and be prepared and take them seriously, of course, which I know Tennessee will. But Tennessee should be okay. Tennessee should finish the regular season 11-1. and one. It won't go to Atlanta unless there's just a collapse by Georgia, which I don't anticipate um, happening. But it's still in a really, really good spot. So, you know, Georgia is going to be the number one ranked team in the land. You know, that took took down Tennessee that was number one, shrink the schedules 47. Ohio State shrink the schedules 53. Georgia efficiency numbers, seven on offense, one on defense, 2-0 and in ranked games. Ohio State, 9-0, and shrink the schedule 53rd. Number one on offense, efficiency rating, number five on defense. It's got a 2-0 and ranked, uh, 2-0 and record in ranked games. Michigan will likely be number three, not an O record, strength of schedule 73. It's That's a big reason why uh, Michigan was left out of the top four last week despite the undefeated record. Uh, offensive efficiency is 12th. Defensive efficiency is number seven. It's only 1-0 and o against ranked opponents. So Michigan, I, we'll see how good they are in a couple of weeks when they play Ohio State. Uh, there's a reason why Michigan was left out of the top five or top four um, of the college football playoff rankings last week. So I feel like Ohio State will handle Michigan pretty handedly. And, and here's the thing, too. I mean, Ohio State didn't look good whatsoever against Northwestern. Talking about Heisman, we'll get that later in the week. But, you know, C.J. Stroud went ahead and overtook Hendon Hooker in terms of the favorite to win the Heisman, largely because Ohio State's still undefeated. C.J. Stroud did not look good whatsoever against Northwestern. Hendon Hooker didn't look good at all against Georgia, but his stats, you know, he still threw for almost 200 yards where – C.J. Stroud did not, okay? So, anyway, not a good day statistically for the Heisman race for those two guys, but I think Ohio State will still be number two, and I think Ohio State will have no issue whatsoever taking down Michigan at the end of the season. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to battle off a little bit of a, a sickness here. That's why my voice is a little scratchy. I apologize. But I think TCU will be number four tonight with Tennessee fifth, even though I believe Tennessee should be at number five um, or number four. Oregon? It'll be there at number six, likely. It's eight and one on the season. It's one loss is to Georgia, but it was very much more lopsided than even Tennessee's score. It's during the schedule's 27, third on offensive efficiency, 44th defensive efficiency. It is two and one in ranked games. And then number seven, I bet, will be LSU tonight. LSU has continued. It was number 10 in the college football playoff rankings last week, knocked off Alabama in overtime. It's going to move up. It's seven and two. It's the only two loss team in the top seven here. In terms of my rankings, eighth strength of schedule, toughest strength of schedule. It's got 14th efficiency rating on offense. Mm, can't even read my own writing, guys. That's bad. 20th. Yeah, 20th rating on defense. And it's two and one in terms of ranked football games. So I would have it like this tonight Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Tennessee, TCU, and then Oregon. What it's going to be is you flip those four and five numbers right there. It's going to be TCU number four. It's going to be Tennessee at number five because Tennessee's not going anywhere. TCU could very easily lose this weekend. And once TCU, TCU loses, it's out of here, right? I mean, at least for the next couple of weeks. I mean, it's out of here because the strength of schedule is not good. So that's kind of my compelling argument for why I think Tennessee should still be ranked at number four in the top four of the college football playoff rankings. Coming up tonight, eight and one, second toughest strength of schedule in the country. Efficiency rating is number four on offense, 35th on defense, and it's five and one in ranked football games. Talk about strength of schedule. Georgia was like number 70 something entering last week. And with that win over Tennessee, obviously it jumped all the way up to number 47. So um, anyway, that's kind of how I see it. We'll have to see exactly what it looks like when the second edition of the college football playoff rankings that comes out later tonight at seven o'clock. All right, your mailback question. Those are getting in the hopper and we will talk about those and answer those in segments two and three right here on Locked on Vols. Hey, this week's thrilling moment in college football. It's always brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moments, whoo, guys, they're, uh, there wasn't much to choose from, I'm not going to lie to you. Not a whole lot on the offensive end. I'm not going to give you one from Georgia, even though there's plenty to choose from over there. But let's go Latrell Bumpus. Latrell Bumpus, opening drive of the football game for Georgia. They dropped around midfield. 
run to the left, it's Edwards, or run to the right, it's Edwards. Latrell Bumpus makes the stop, pokes his bear claw in there, and jogs that football loose, and Tennessee recovers, gets really good field position to start off that football game. I mean, what a moment, what a way to start off that football game. Tennessee was able to get three points, able to get something out of that turnover there to begin the football game, but a really, really nice play there from Latrell Bumpus, causing a turnover, forcing a fumble, on Georgia's opening possession of that football game. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you at a new Frontier or Pathfinder today. It's available now at NissanUSA.com. Welcome back into Locked On Balls. It's your team every single day, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, we're going to get into your Twitter Tuesday questions here in just one moment, but I forgot to read something here in segment number one in regards to the college football playoffs, those rankings and all that good stuff. Uh, big fan of the college football power index over at ESPN. You guys know that. I've been spouting off stats all throughout segment number one. Forgot to mention this about Tennessee. Um, the FBI gives the Vols a 63.7% chance to make the playoffs and a 76% chance to win out over the next three games. So still, it's not just me saying Tennessee's in a good spot. I mean, there's there's statistical evidence uh, or you know statistical stats and everything to kind of back that up. Way more you know sm- way more smart people, smarter people than I have come up with all this type of stuff. But sixty three point seven percent chance to make the playoffs still for Tennessee and a seventy six percent chance of winning out over the next three games. Uh, you look at uh, Ohio State. Meanwhile, eighty six percent chance to make the pl- uh, college football playoff. Georgia. It's got a 91.2% chance to make the playoff. Clemson with a loss. It's got a 74.6% chance to win the ACC, but just a 31% chance of making the college football playoff right now. Michigan, it's got a 62.6% chance of making the college football playoff. But of course, it's got to play Ohio State later on. Alabama, meanwhile, just a 16.2% chance to make the playoff now with two losses, and TCU only a 15.7% chance to make the college football playoff per the FBI because it's got back-to-back road games against Texas and TCU, or uh, Texas and then another opponent. I don't, I don't have that uh, uh, that game in front of me, but then it's also got a home uh, game against Ohio, uh, Iowa State before it's all said and done. 41.8% chance uh, to win the Pac-12 for Oregon, 14% chance for Oregon to make the college football playoff. So those are some percentages from the football power index uh, to kind of back up my reasoning there. All right, let's get into your Twitter Tuesday questions, the mailbag edition of the show. And uh, it's when your voice is heard every single Tuesday right here on Locked on Balls. All right, so let's go to Orange Crab. And Orange Crab wants to know, also Daniel wants to know about... No new wrinkles or quarterback runs in this football game for Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, This is from Orange Crab. Uh, Clear the Kirby's D confused Hooker early like uh, Spurrier used to do Peyton. Didn't you think Coach would have continued or countered with some different wrinkles on the offense for Georgia, like more QB runs, rolling Hinton Hooker out, more RPOs, more throws the backs, tight ends, just something. Yeah, uh, the, the main takeaway right there for me would be, why was there not more design quarterback runs? I understand you don't want Hendon Hooker to take those hits, but in games like Florida earlier this season, in games like Alabama where he really didn't run that much, but in games like Georgia, you've got to run Hendon Hooker. It's such a big part of his football game and kind of who he is. Run the football with your quarterback and protect him any other time you can. You know, Don't run him against Missouri. You shouldn't have to run him against Missouri or South Carolina or Vanderbilt or UT Martin or Akron where you ran the speed option a couple of times. I mean... Come on, like run the football with Hendon Hooker in a, in, in a game like this. I could not agree more. Alex Golish and, and Josh Heupel have been really, really good this year. I don't think it was their best called game on Saturday. But then again, Georgia's got a lot to do with that. Georgia, of course, has a whole lot to do with that. Let's go to Michael. Uh, I know that defensive back depth is shaky, but could there be a chance to see D. Williams move over to the offensive side of the football potentially next season or in special formation. Seems like elusive with the ball in his hands. That's a really good question. You know, in fall camp, D. Williams, you heard great things about him. Then he got hurt, and he came back, and the stuff you hear about him at practice in the defensive backfield is not great. You put him in a football game a couple times, and he doesn't look good at DB, 
or at at cornerback, and it's just really mind blowing because you heard great things about him in fall camp at the quarterback position, but there's not a whole lot of confidence there for him at DB right now. So he's obviously really dynamic with the ball in his hands. I'm intrigued to know if maybe they kind of go a Devin Hester route, maybe try to work him in on offense, not now, but just like in the future. That's a really good question. Something to follow up on for sure. Uh, let's go to Jason. And I think Aaron also asked something about this as well. Do you like the Vols chance against Georgia in a playoff game since it will be on a neutral field? Tennessee fans travel well. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Tennessee's chances way better than what they played the other day, right? I just can't see Tennessee playing that poorly on the offensive side of the football again. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I think Tennessee would win that game because Tennessee was not the better football team on Saturday. Anything's possible. Tennessee can win that football game, but I'm not going to sit here and call it after Tennessee just got waxed, if that kind of makes sense, right? Um, but I, I would like to see it again. I mean, you know, I, th they're not going to square off in the semifinal round because they're going to try to avoid any type of rematch. The only time that th these two teams would play, in my opinion, would be in a national championship because that's kind of how Georgia and Alabama have been the last two times. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we'll have to see. But, yeah, I mean, if Tennessee was, was linked up with Georgia again in the playoffs at some point, again, there's no, there, there's no reason not to have confidence – in Tennessee because the offense is so dynamic and it's, I mean, you had eight games, the track record, right? As a sample size, Tennessee played horrible against one team and that was Georgia and Georgia got a lot to do with that. But, you know, look at Georgia playing like crap in the SEC championship game against Alabama. And then look what Georgia did to Alabama in the national championship teams can rebound. So um, I would like to see it again for sure. But I do think Georgia is really, really good. Let's go to Andrew. Which seniors aren't going to participate in senior day activities because they are likely coming back for another year? Um, I don't know. I asked about this on Monday, and the list has not been finalized yet, and that, that will likely kind of continue throughout the week when they hear back from some players and everything. I can tell you who will be there for sure. Six-year players, Hendon Hooker, Jerome Carvin, Princeton Fant, Latrell Bumpus, Grant Ferking, likely now these next couple of ones I'm going to read off are not six years. So technically they could come back even if they're fifth years, they can use that COVID year. But I don't think these players I'm about the name are going to come back. I think that they're going to go to the draft. Byron Young, Darnell Wright, and uh, Cedric Tillman. Now <clears throat> we'll see, you know, Jacob Warren's an interesting case. I think he would probably be a likely candidate to come back. Um, Trayvon Flowers could come back, but you kind of get the impression that he does. He's not going to come back, but we'll see. Um, Jalen McCullough is another one that could come back. Actually, Jalen McCullough, his freshman year was in 2019. So never mind. He's not even a senior right now. Um, there's again, I can't wait till we get past this this gap in sports where or this period in sports where it's like, see a fifth year, is he a COVID senior? Is he a six year? It's so confusing. Um, but I would expect those players that are named off, especially the six years, of course, to be going through senior day, but we're just gonna we really won't know until they get out there. And remember, you can go through Senior Day twice. I mean, Trayvon Flowers went through Senior Day last year. Um, I want to say Jerome Carvin went through Senior Day last year. All of these times, they don't make the decision until after the season. So uh, something to be mindful of. It's not set in stone. Guys who have eligibility, they go through Senior Day. That does not mean that they are 100% gone. Uh, let's go to Tony. And I think Zach also wants to know, uh, how is it a false start when the back judge is holding the play? The false start didn't make any sense. Um, I've been asked about this countless times over the course of the first of this week. It was Gerald Mincy in the first quarter, one of those false start penalties that he got called for. I didn't see it in real time. There's so much going on during the game that I'm doing. And honestly, guys, I didn't see it on rewatch. That does not mean it didn't happen. Um, I've, I've, I've reached out to a couple people and at the time of this recording, I have not heard back. I will continue to press on that because if the umpire is holding up the play for an injury or substitution or whatever the case may be, and, and an offensive lineman jumps, that should not count as a false start. I agree. So I'll double check on this. I'll continue to look for it, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll uh, let you guys know. All right, we'll get to one more here in this segment. Let's go to Darius. We may not have won the game, but throughout, I still held the confidence that uh, Tennessee can make a comeback, and that's exciting about this team. Do you think the loss breaks their confidence in themselves, or do you think it lights more of a fire than they already have moving forward? Um, yeah, it's a fair question because Tennessee, of course, just lost. But yeah, I don't see, 
I don't see a loss breaking this team. I mean, I've said it countless times this year. The leadership is really impressive. Hendon Hooker, Cedric Tillman, Byron Young, Jerome Carvin, uh, Trayvon Flowers, uh, Jalen McCullough is even a leader. I know he missed some time because of an off the field incident, but nonetheless, I mean, the leadership in this room is in this building and in, uh, in the locker room is really strong. And so, as far as will this break their confidence, I don't think so whatsoever. I mean, Tennessee is still – Tennessee, in my opinion, is still one of the best four teams in, in college football right now. So I don't think that's going to be the case. Of course, we will have to wait to see how it responds. Hey, we'll get to a couple more questions here in segment number three if my voice will hold up. And uh, plenty more to get into right here on Locked On Balls. But first, I want to remind you guys about one of our favorite sponsors over the Locked On Podcast Network. It is our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online. It's got all the stuff for you guys. It's the number one source for the sports and betting information, stats, news, and analysis for this season. You can get the latest odds and the trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer, esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. All right, so I mentioned a couple of different things earlier in segment number one about the Heisman odds. Here's the actual stat here. This is from Bet Online. okay? Hendon Hooker Heis- Hendon Hooker's Heisman odds plummeted from odds on 100 minus 150 or two thirds favorite down to th- plus 325 at 13 to four odds. C.J. Stroud, who didn't play much better, but Ohio State did win, he is now the favorite once again, playing out a plus 225 or nine to four odds. So one loss took Hendon Hooker and the leader in the Heisman race down to second place per bet online. You can find that out and a whole lot more. You know, whatever sports you guys got, it's over at betonline.net. Fastest, easiest way to get in your betting fix. Head on over to the website today or use your mobile device. To learn about all the latest trends and all the action. Bet online. It is where the game starts. All right, guys, we got a final segment left here of this edition of Locked On Vols. We're doing a mailbag show, segments two and three. Your voice to be heard every single week right here on the show. Again, apologies. My throat is a little scratchy. It is that time of the year. With the cold weather mixing with the warm weather, and you just you, know, you get all you get all you know cruddy and whatnot. So do apologize. I know it's not ideal for listening to somebody, but it is what it is. We'll work through it. Um, it's not bad yet. I've done this show much much worse. Do you guys remember you OGs out there? After the Music City Bowl last year, I had no voice. Oh my god, that was that was a train wreck. But anyway, let's get into it before I really do lose my voice. Uh, straight up Tennessee. I mentioned uh, this kind of earlier, but. So with Hendon Hooker getting pressure, is there a reason he doesn't throw it away instead of taking a sack? Maybe just instincts, just kind of curious. Do you think Tennessee needed to establish more of Hendon in the run game against teams like Georgia? 100%. Hendon Hooker has got to be a threat on the ground, not only for Tennessee's success, but I think it gets him into a rhythm. I think it builds his confidence. I think it gets him into a rhythm. There was no rhythm whatsoever in that football game offensively for t- for Tennessee. If you guys are members over VolQuest.com and Red Brent Hub's 10 things, I th- 10 things I think I think after the game, he kind of broke down drive and all the stoppages of play in each drive for Tennessee, whether it be a false start, whether it be a, another pre-snap penalty, whether it be an injury for Tennessee, an injury for Georgia, whether it be a flag that was thrown that they picked up, you know, whatever the case may be, no rhythm whatsoever. I think Hendon running the football could have created some of that uh, – some of that uh, rhythm a little bit. Also, there were a couple of times where I went back and watched and noticed dude was out of the pocket, was just dancing around, throw that football out of freaking bounds. And what are you doing, man? I say, what are you doing? He's one of the best players in college football, very much still in the Heisman conversation. Throw the football out, get it, get it away. Um, Hendon Hooker, when asked about that in Monday's press conference, about holding on to the football a little bit, you can tell he didn't want to answer the the, the question, um, you know, kind of kind of got a little perturbed, but he just said he was trying to make some plays. And, you know, I understand that. Just trying to – not going to fault you for trying to make some plays. But he did hold on to the football quite a long time, and it was not good for Tennessee. Let's go to Hunter. Let's see here. Can one argue that we're in a better path for the playoff now than if we would have beaten the Dogs? Obviously, not in terms of just making the playoffs, but having one less tough game than other schools who will play in the conference championship. Potentially healthier – if we make it in, thanks. I uh, love the content on Vol Quest and Locked On Balls. Appreciate it, Hunter. Um, I'm not going to say Tennessee has an easier easier path now because honestly, I didn't want to say it last week, but I mean, honestly, if Tennessee would have won that game, that they they punched their ticket. Um, 
because again, you're not going to lose, you know, knocking on wood here. This Tennessee football team is not losing to Missouri, South Carolina, or Vanderbilt. If you would have beat Georgia, you would have been in the SEC championship game. I think that would have punched your ticket. Now, what if you went to the SEC championship game and got blown out by four scores? Maybe not, but I, again, I don't think that was the case. Now, so I'm not going to say it's an easier path, but I do understand where you're coming from because Tennessee is still in a really, really good chance, a uh, really, really good spot. I mentioned the uh, FBI over at ESPN.com still gives Tennessee a 76% chance of making the college football playoff, not playing the SEC championship game, resting, getting healthier, and then say you get picked fourth or third or whatever, then go in there, guns a blazing. I don't know. You know, we'll see. But if you would have won last week against Georgia, in my opinion, barring some type of catastrophe, you would have punched your ticket. So now you now you still play that game of what about TCU? What about Oregon? Uh, what about Michigan? How do they look against Ohio State? I mean, there are there are a lot LSU, of course. A lot of people got mad at me on the board yesterday, Volquest.com, because a two loss LSU team, if it were to win the SEC championship game, very much could snag that last spot. Very much because you're a conference champion and you uh, and you beat an undefeated Georgia. Now, again, that's not going to happen. That will not happen, in my opinion. But again, that that's another scenario. So you're not you still have to worry and still got a scoreboard watch a little bit, but you're still in a good spot. But I won't say that you're in a better spot now. But I do understand from a health perspective, kind of what you're saying right now. Let's go to K Wayne. If I can find K Wayne, K Wayne, there you go. Uh, saw Georgia's defense shut us down on Saturday for the first time this year. What was mostly to blame? Do you think it was the crowd noise causing pre-snap penalties, killing the tempo? Uh, was it Georgia doing something different from an X's and O standpoint that other teams haven't done? Um, is it that much talent? In other words, was it Jimmy's and Joe's or X's and O's? Uh, do you just blame Ainge for pissing off the Georgia fans? Uh, <laughs> don't make me laugh. I'll cough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And not not the smartest move there from Eric Ainge, and I can say that because I'm his friend. That's not the reason Tennessee lost. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think it's a combination of all that stuff. Listen, Georgia said, "I'm going to line up. I'm I'm going to guard you man on man, and if you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me." Um, I, I think that there's still, you know, if Tennessee, if any other team does that, Tennessee probably wins the majority of the time. Also, Georgia's defensive backs they were content with holding. They held all the time. I think they called for four or five defensive holding calls. You know why they did that? Because they were saying, you will not beat me deep, all right? If I get called for this, it's a 15-yard penalty. It's not a spot foul. So I think it's a combination of a little bit of everything, right? George is good. I mean, people got mad at me because I came on here Monday and I said, George is good. George is good. I mean, did you watch the game? Hell, George is a good football team. There's talent there. Tennessee can't just line up and beat them like they can pretty much anybody else, right? That's the difference in a good program and an elite program. Uh, Tennessee's played some good programs this year. Not like Georgia. Georgia is an elite program under Kirby Smart. So to answer your question, K. Wayne, I think it's a little bit of all of the above. Let's move on now. Let's go to Ross. This is a comment from Ross, I believe. Just saw the polls. This is from Sunday afternoon. If someone had told me we'd be eight and one, ranked fifth after playing Pitt or after playing and beating Pitt, Florida, LSU, Bama, Kentucky, and then losing to Georgia, I think I would have asked them to pass me whatever they were smoking. No joke, man. For real, it's been it's been quite a fun season, no doubt about it. Let's go to Braden. If you had to predict the top four for the college football playoff today, what would be or who would be in by season's end, and who would you put where? Man, that's impossible to predict right now. I, for the sake of the exercise and just for 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 fun, I'll, I'll do it. But it's impossible to predict, to be honest. I mean. There's so many big time football games over the last month of the season. That's kind of what uh, Josh Hopple was saying. Georgia will be in. Georgia will be an SEC champion, likely be undefeated. Georgia will be in. I think Ohio State beats Michigan, and I think Ohio State goes in. They're undefeated as Big Ten champion. Michigan can beat them potentially, but I think Ohio State will beat Michigan. So those those are two. And then how do you want to do the rest of them? What about a Pac-12 champion? What if Oregon wins the Pac-12? I'm not buying that. I'm still not buying that. What if what if TCU wins the Big 12, the Big 12? I don't think it will because I don't – it might not be Texas this weekend, right? Still got some games coming up on the schedule. Still have Iowa State as well. I'm not buying that. Oh. Will Michigan fall all the way out or will it still get in as one loss? I, I don't think so. So here's a, here's what I'll do. Clemson's done. I'll go Georgia one, Ohio State two. I'll go Tennessee three, and I'll go 
I don't know. Let's see here. Could USC get in that conversation? Well, that's Pac-12, right? I don't know. Maybe Michigan. Hell, I don't know. We'll see. Could, could we see four teams that have already played each other? You just split those up, have Georgia play Michigan, have Tennessee play Ohio State. The winners of those go in advance on. I don't know. That's just kind of my, my thought process right now. I'm sure I'm leaving out a team. I'm sure I am. I'm human. But that's kind of what I see right now. Uh, again, there's a month away. There's a whole lot of football left to be played. You asked for a fun exercise. I gave it to you. Do not, do not, anybody hold me to that. All right. We're going to get to one more because my voice is about to just say, see ya. Let's go over to Locked On Balls account. Let's go to our guy, Bruce. Bruce on the loose. I heard Georgia head coach say that at the end of the game, none of his kids were transfer portal players. I took that as a shot at us. I'm proud of our kids, still under 85 and head of Alabama. I'll take it. <coughs> um, sorry again. I don't know. I, I didn't hear him say that. I was in I was in the other press conference and I'm I covered Tennessee. So, you know, whatever any other coach says uh after the game, I, I don't really care. So I haven't seen that comment. I'm not uh, I, I'm sure it happened. Um I don't know. I guarantee you if I went and searched that, I, none off the top of my head come to mind in terms of transfers into that program. But I got to be honest with you. If I go to the roster and I look right now, I guarantee freaking tell you, tell you I'll see some transfers on that roster. I mean, that's college football, right? Sure, Tennessee had to take some transfers. Tennessee also said goodbye to 30 players who left after a coaching change. You've got to build up your roster. You can't compete with 57 or 8 players or whatever the case may be. You can't compete in the SEC. You just can't. So, um, and even if, I mean, you know, Tennessee's got Byron Young technically a transfer, but he transferred up. Hendon Hooker's a transfer. Um, you got Brew McCoy's a transfer. I mean, Cade Mays, he's gone now, but he was a transfer. Gerald Mincy's a transfer. It's legal. It's a transfer portal. Do or die, adapt or die. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That that comment makes no sense to me. I didn't hear it. I didn't see it, but that comment makes no sense. And you're right. Tennessee adapted. Tennessee is one of the best five teams in the country right now. And Tennessee has a really, really good resume with some impressive wins. So I think Tennessee is doing a pretty good job there. All right, guys, that will do it for this edition of Locked on Vols. Every single weekday morning when you wake up, you got Locked on Vols to look forward to. Couldn't do it without you guys. We surpassed 5,100 subs on YouTube the other day. Man, y'all are incredible. Thank you so much. If you're listening and you and you have a YouTube account, go subscribe if you haven't already. If you're watching, you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Don't leave here until you subscribe. Hit that like button. Really, really do appreciate you guys and all the support of the show and this mailbag edition. Thank you so much for making Locked On Balls your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out Locked On Sports today. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and it's the take of the day. It's available, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcast. Guys, appreciate it. Same time, same place. We will do it again tomorrow. We'll hear from Josh Ward. We'll look at some PFF grades. We'll discuss where Tennessee is ranked in the college football playoff rankings. That and more going up on tomorrow's Locked On Vaults.